Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earth Master here, April 25th, 2024, 7.35 p.m. California time, 9.35 Central time here in Kansas, beautiful state of Kansas. I've uh, been covering a lot of weather out here today. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, also, we got some friends of mine in the background kind of chirping along. Some of those uh, great, are they great-tailed? Great-tailed the great-tailed grackle. I'm sure you guys, uh, if you live around here, anywhere in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, they're all over the place. Beautiful birds, very smart. Uh, they do make a little bit of noise, but uh, I actually find it quite enjoyable to listen to them during a thunderstorm. All right, 2.8 earthquake here, the latest of uh, decent earthquake activity here in Texas. Got a swarm of activity stirring up out here, it looks like, uh, in the West Texas area. It's just out here um driving around a day or so ago looks like we got about 30 earthquakes out here in the last 24 hours including uh, i've seen a couple threes in there 3.8 3.9 um and a bunch of other earthquakes out here now the majority of these are happening it looks like away from the pecos texas area to the north around the new mexico texas border now there is quite a bit of oil fields in this area as well. Let me show you guys real quick the satellite view. Um, if you zoom in and take a little bit better look here, there's a lot of these oil pumping operation pads out here. And that is where this earthquake swarm is kicking up here today it looks like. Right in this area. Uh, 17 right there in this region. Again, that's just south of the border, and also a little bit of activity further south here uh, around the Pecos, Texas area. A little separate swarm here to the west. Um, overall, it just shows a general sign of strain out here against the, uh, uh, the North American plate, well away from the plate boundary, but there are some older faults. Uh, but the majority of these are associated with the oil pumping operations of wastewater disposal ponds. Uh, or disposal facilities and whatnot that takes place out here. So watch for potentially larger movement. Uh, a lot of times when we see swarming out here, that could be a good indicator of maybe seeing a four or five magnitude earthquake out there in that region. Oklahoma, I got one earthquake here outside of the OKC area, little 2.6. Uh, backing out across the area here uh, into the Yellowstone region, looks like the USGS has added a few more earthquakes here on the map for the Yellowstone area around the Hebgen Lake area. Now, let's see here. It does look like this site is working. Let me double check. It is. Been having some issues with it recently. So when I have some weird issues with it, I just leave it alone for a couple days in hopes that they get it fixed. But there's still uh, a decent amount of earthquake activity kicking up here today, it looks like. Um, 425, right? 425. The UTC time of uh, 0200 now. I'm not for sure if that's right. 0200. Um, I think we're past that. So it looks like this is some older um, maps here that uh, this website is showing. 425, we're past that. Well, wait a minute, let's see here. It's hard to tell. This is kind of uh, blocked out here. This may be 426. Eh, not for sure. Um, let's go to the Utah stations out here. We'll double check that, make sure. Keeping an eye on the sky out here where I'm at today. We're underneath a tornado watch uh, here in Kansas. Got uh, some supercells kicking up right now and man uh, some of these storms are getting a nice little uh, tail on them and uh, quite windy out here in western Kansas so yeah the um, University of Utah showing the same thing out here so looks like uh, a little bit of earthquake activity so this is going to be local time here 20 so this is correct it looks like um, 425 um, about 8 o'clock or so. So that's correct. That means we're still seeing uh, what looks like an ongoing earthquake swarm out here against the uh, Yellowstone supervolcano area confined to the Maple Creek area. Looks like a decent amount of earthquake activity out here in the last 12 hours or so. 
We'll continue to watch that. Uh, USGS reporting a handful of them, about 18 or so, but obviously we've seen a lot more than that in the last couple days. They're uh, up to a number of about 69 or 70 earthquakes here within this region of Yellowstone. Not, uh, you know, not anything big in terms of the magnitude, but definitely looking at uh, an ongoing swarm once again here uh, at Yellowstone National Park. These birds are making some crazy noises. <laughs> and they were just outside enjoying the lightning and thunder that just went through a few minutes ago. Pretty crazy. All right, uh, let's see. Let's go back here to the West Coast, see what's going on. Um, kind of weird. Got a little trail of activity stretching from Yellowstone, from Idaho, uh, even Montana area. So the majority of this is going to be a, um, a fault stress out here, it looks like. Quite a few faults through uh, Montana and Idaho there. Uh, some minimal movement up there across the Oregon area. Getting a little bit of swarming here in the northern California region once again. A couple twos at the southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. So let's go see what's going on here on the trimmer map tonight. See if we've got anything major going on. Kind of a, a broad area here of the Cascadia that is showing some trimmer activity. Got about 400 epicenters of trimmer from Vancouver Island range all the way down into uh, Northern California area. So it does look like things are starting to stir back up out here. Um, of course, that's an area we gotta watch as well, right? Because that's uh, 324 years of built up strain since the last mega quake out there. Last, uh, I think it was 9.1, 9.2, somewhere around there back in 1700. All right, rest of Northern California, handful of earthquakes here north of Chester. Very small earthquakes. Uh, as far as the rest of California goes, uh, mainly quiet conditions prevailing out here for now. Still seeing a little bit of spotty movement off the coast of San Diego and the San Jacinto Fault Zone inland. The San Andreas Fault here, pretty quiet. No major swarming happening around that area for now. Look at the broader view here. Taiwan uh, has backed off a little bit in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, let me double check here the earthquake map from the EMSC model. These guys are the ones that show, you know, some of the smaller quakes that may be taking place out here. And there's a handful. Looks like things are uh, calming back down, but we've seen at least four, uh, two four-pointers out there in the last 24 hours. Most of the activity today has kind of shifted down south to the Philippines area and into the Java Trench. Look at this, a lot of activity stirring up here throughout the day today. Uh, nothing big, but definitely noticing a broad scale area of earthquake activity. Uh, across the New Zealand area, not seeing anything showing up here, but I want to double check the GeoNet servers and make sure. Got a 2.2 seven hours ago, 3.4. Looks like around the Tapu uh, Super Volcano, eight hours ago. A couple other threes and twos in there as well. Um, let's give a quick glance here at the earthquake drum, see if anything else is going on uh, across the area. No broad, large movement. Um, there is the, oh, which earthquake is that? That's up along the Kermadec Trench, I believe. Gonna be, um, I believe this one, yeah, because we're coming up almost on 24 hours, so that's what that earthquake is there. Uh, aside from that, um, looks like, you know, some of the smaller quakes showing up out here, but really no major movement going on there across the New Zealand area for now. The uh, big island of Hawaii out here in the uh, Pacific, still seeing some movement out here across the Kilauea Volcano Summit region. Got about 12 earthquakes there showing up in that area. Uh, let's go check out the volcano hazards here. Hopefully it's working tonight. And uh, let me give it a refresh, double check here. I'm having some issues with it uh, recently. So let's go, have to go do it manually here. Um, no thanks, we're good. Looks like um, for the most part, everything, this is the update here from uh, today, it looks like the volcano is currently not erupting. And um, shallow earthquakes have been observed beneath the summit region the past two days. Updates will be provided daily while at a heightened state of unrest. So it looks like things are uh, kicking up out here. Uh, there has been increasing earthquake activity and deformation 
Most of the earthquakes here have been smaller than magnitude 2. Uh, the Kilauea summit remains inflated, and overall ground deformation rates remain low with ongoing inflation of the summit and uplift south of the caldera. All right, so uh, they mentioned here that uh, some magma is moving around underneath the area due to the earthquake swarm last Friday night, low frequency range. Uh, indicating some movement of magma within the summit system. So uh, we'll definitely continue to uh, keep an eye on that and uh, report back on anything that may take place out here. Definitely uh, getting close, I think. I'm not for sure if we're there yet or not in terms of uh, you know the uh, potential eruption, but I think we're getting somewhat close there for the uh, Kilauea volcano. All right, um, let's see here. Let's get back to the USGS map here and see what else may be going on. Are we working? Hopefully we are. I know we got a big storm nearby, so maybe that's what's going on here. Shows that I'm up. Is the USGS down? Well, maybe it's, maybe it's the USGS that's having some issues there. It took too long to respond. Okay. Um, yeah, on the Earthquake 3D globe, though, we can look and see what else may be going on here globally. Uh, some movement in there in Poland earlier today. Um, not a whole lot out here in the Atlantic Ocean for now. Did have one 4.9 way down south into the South Sandwich Islands area, but uh, that was about it. Let's go check out Iceland, see if anything else is going on out here. Got about uh, 13 earthquakes being reported. Nothing big st uh, showing up here for now. In fact, uh, still looks fairly quiet in terms of earthquake activity here across the region that is currently seeing the ongoing long-term eruption. All right, uh, let's go check out solarham.net. See what's going on here with the space weather activity. I know we've seen that large sunspot area disappear off the western limb here recently. Um, goodness, I'm not for sure what's going on here, but... Uh, could be the storm. Storm might be having some effects here with the uh, data that I'm using. But, uh, you know, the flaring activity is currently going down, it looks like, due to the um, lack of the large region, which is uh, way over here now. That has since shifted way out, out there on the western limb. We're left with a couple very weak sunspots out here. Really not impressed with any of these. The uh, flare threat is probably going to drop like a rock. Here tomorrow. Uh, right now, 15% chance for an X flare, M flare at 75% chance, C flare at 99. And they're talking about maybe here um, a little bit of unsettled conditions there uh, across the higher latitudes for the auroras. Not really expecting anything major here, but it uh, looks like maybe a slight uptick. A lot of this stuff is not working right now. So, all right, um, Storm Prediction Center. What? Is that working? Maybe, maybe not. Goodness, nothing's working out here. <laughs> there we go. It'll work on this one, but not on that one. That's kind of odd. So, our current threat here right now does show the potential for uh, some development tonight. There's supposed to be a uh, pretty decent squall line that's going to pop up here outside of the. Uh, in the western Oklahoma area and make its way through the OKC area late overnight. Uh, this is for day one. Again, you know, there's still a tornado risk for, for tonight. Looks like they dropped it a little bit, but uh, a 5 and 2% zone out here where I'm at, all the way down into Texas as well. Wind and hail threats in these areas as, uh, as well. Uh, for tomorrow, the main threat looks like it's going to be way up here into eastern uh, Nebraska area, it looks like. Get rid of the county's map. Uh, eastern, northeastern Kansas, and a large area here uh, for slight category across these other states. The main threat's going to be up there uh, into the uh, regions that I just mentioned. Omaha, Lincoln, Des Moines, Topeka, uh, and La uh, Lawrence, Kansas area. All in that potential for uh, tornado activity tomorrow. Uh, Saturday, day three, still looking likely that we'll see a potential severe weather outbreak here. We'll cover that as we get a little bit closer. 
Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to watch these storms tonight. There's still a uh, tornado potential component with these storms tonight here in my area. I'm outside of the, uh, I'm here in western Kansas out here, and I just got to be careful um, because we're staying here uh, at our room tonight and kind of hard to sleep when there's obviously some big time storms going on around us. But uh, let me bring up the. Where did my Tropical Tidbits page go? There we go. Not interested in the uh, weather satellite yet. We're going to check out uh, this line that's supposed to pop up here tonight. South Central area, the Mesoscale is going to be a NAM model. And here's our ongoing activity up here in Kansas where I'm at. A lot of storms. There's a low pressure system that is going to work its way through the region. Now watch western... Um, Oklahoma in the Texas area it does look like uh, this is going to be a big time hailer down here overnight across this area while people are sleeping uh, it looks like it may go through um, Dallas Fort Worth area later on in the early morning as well there's our severe weather potential that's going to pop up for um, for tomorrow going to be right up here across the uh, eastern areas of Kansas. Uh, supercell development possible behind that line. As we head into Saturday, we'll have to look at that a little bit closer, but Saturday does look like it's going to be a pretty decent day for uh, some severe weather. We'll have to watch that as well, folks. So, um, Have a good night out there. Uh, if you're out here in Kansas or anywhere around the severe weather, stay safe. Keep your weather radio on and uh, make sure you have some type of plan in terms of dealing with, um, you know, if there happens to be a tornado warning or whatnot in your area, it's always good to uh, take heed when those warnings come about. Have a good night, folks. Um, we'll catch you guys a little bit later. I tried to live stream the storms earlier, but I uh, had a really spotty signal and I uh, didn't get a chance to uh, reconnect when I lost the stream. So we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Friday morning update. Friday already upon us. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, folks. Stay safe out there.